This video is sponsored by Mattress Firm. I'm exhausted. just so happens to be one of the nicest weekends of the winter like the weather's like nearly 50 degrees it's only like 11 a.m. and sunny so I'm about to go grab a bagel something I never do but I don't really feel like going too far to get breakfast because I haven't ate really at all today besides two Reese cups so in this video I basically just want to talk about having a healthy work-life balance through hobbies making sure you're staying mentally positive and getting a good night's rest, which is something we typically overlook, especially with this hustle culture that's really popular nowadays. Sleep is actually important, always has and always will be. back at the hotel this is my first time ever going to Brugger's bagels it was it was surprisingly good I don't feel good about spending ten dollars on a bagel and some orange juice but it was delicious I can't lie like I want another one but uh definitely a different type of Sunday typically I'll like get coffee in the morning and then I usually go to church so either I'll go to church at 9 30 or 11 30 and then I'll either have brunch with my fiance or have brunch with my friends and my fiance and that's been a great way of uh, being able to build community especially outside of work and it's something i've truly appreciated and needed as me and my friends have been making the transition from university to being full-time professionals and i also want to thank you all for giving me so many questions to answer and if i'm being 100 percent honest with you i'm not going to be able to answer all of them but i will try my best to answer all of them whether it's through making another video where I do a Q&A or if I just like answer your questions through the YouTube app um, from that post that I made or through Twitter or through Instagram. So just, just bear with me. I only have like 10 minutes until I need to check out of this hotel. So we're gonna be transitioning to a few different locations probably. At least one other location, depends on if I wanna film this video at another site here in Pittsburgh or if I want to just do it at the crib. But the first question is, do you think the demand for computer science will be the same a decade from now? That's a really, really good question. And I think my answer is yes, because we're only going to be building more applications, um, I figured devices and vehicles great products and appliances. With are only going to be and buildings and are only going to be getting latest, smarter, latest, right? And only going to be getting more efficient. So they're going to need Mattress computer scientists to, to solve some of those problems, um, especially with health with healthcare when you shop and solving. Um, we're not solving or helping um, doctors um, cure diseases and making life easier and for them. There's so many US ways computer scientists can help. I don't for more information about finding it going anywhere a decade from now, especially considering the fact that. If you get an A bet accredited CS degree, then you're going to be taking a lot of science, a lot of math, you're going to be taking some electrical engineering courses. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you the ability to work in jobs outside of just software development and software engineering. You could be an embedded systems engineer, you could be a consultant, a data scientist, maybe a business analyst, a technical consultant. The list goes on. This is a great question. Another great question. What essentials should be? What essentials should a computer science student know before they apply for an internship? 
the number one thing you need to know is object-oriented programming. And the reason why I say that is because that was a requirement that pretty much every company had for computer science, software engineering students um, who are interested in getting internships. You have to know object-oriented programming unless you're maybe applying for like a front-end role that's literally just CSS, HTML, and maybe a little JavaScript. But even those jobs may want you to know object-oriented programming, um, especially if you're doing um, API calls with JavaScript and maybe doing a little bit of functional programming. But I would say you wanna know that anyways because that's just gonna make your life easier during the internship. And then I would say make sure you have some sort of language that a back-end language like a C++ or a Python or a Java, make sure you are skilled in that language. You don't have to be an expert, but have a couple courses underneath your belt or one course underneath your belt. Um, I would say those are essentials that you should have before you start your internship. I know I talked about having a healthy work-life balance earlier in the video and answered a question about how I maintain having a work or healthy work-life balance. And I think there's one thing that a lot of people, especially around my age, who are young professionals, overlook, and that's sleep. That's something that I try to make sure I take advantage of, is getting my eight hours of sleep. See, as software developers and engineers, you are constantly solving problems, creating solutions for problems that there were no solutions for and having to think logically with your mind. Getting enough rest will help you be more sharp and allow you to work more efficiently and getting those day-to-day -day tasks, those user stories that you need to complete. It's been reported that around 40% of Americans get less than the recommended amount of sleep. And I know as developers, sometimes we only get two to three hours of sleep. But remember, you wanna focus on getting your seven to eight hours of sleep because getting proper rest boosts your mental health for sharpening your brain to help you remember tasks and programming concepts easier. Okay, that's my experience on sleep. Now let's hear a word from our sponsor. I figured it'd be a great time to talk about the great products that Mattress Firm offers. With convenient locations and a wide variety of the latest and greatest mattresses and bedding accessories, Mattress Firm is committed to delivering the best beds at the best value. Your budget can stretch further when you shop at Mattress Firm because of their broad selection of mattresses and bedding accessories. From leading manufacturers and brand names including Serta, Beautyrest, Sleepies, and Purple, for more information about finding your best night's sleep, visit mattressfirm.com. After carefully looking at mattresses at my local mattress firm, I decided to go with the Sleepies Reserve 15.5 inch pillow top. As you sleep, the Sleepies Reserve works to decrease excess body heat and supports your entire body so you can rest easy without overheating or tossing and turning. This mattress is great and I encourage you to take your sleep seriously and go to your nearest mattress firm to either try out this mattress or other amazing mattresses that Mattress Firm offers. Sleep health is very important and a mattress has a lifespan of seven to nine years, but most people don't replace their mattress that often, which could lead to mattress sagging, decreased sleep quality, and even body aches and pain. As you know, the more rest you get, the more prepared you are for the next day. Now that I'm not in college and I have more free time on my hands, I prioritize a good night's sleep, especially when I have a busy day of work ahead of me. If I don't get enough sleep, the next day is usually a struggle and I have to drink coffee and I don't like relying on caffeine. So I need sleep to function and perform my best. All right, what is your work-life balance like? That's a perfect question, especially considering the fact that you all have no idea what the title of this video is gonna be when I open up a Q&A panel, opportunity, options, I don't know. Anyways, um, do you find yourself very stressed in work or does that disappear once you've experienced, once you have experience under your belt. Thanks. So, to answer the first part, my work-life balance is that I like to work out usually in the middle of the day, at least twice a week, just to break up my day, especially like on a Tuesday or like a Wednesday, Thursday, that's almost every day of the work week, where I'm exhausted and I need like some motivation or some inspiration, get that adrenaline going, those endorphins, um, 
So I do like to work out. That's that's part of my work-life balance. Um, I'm in a men's basketball league. That's actually been a lot of fun. Um, and the reason being is because I'm able to build more relationships with people I'm already friends with. Um, I'm able to, um, you know, still have that competitive edge, that competitive nature, and fulfill that because I still kind of need to. <laughs> and um, it's just been fun just to compete and uh, play in an organized basketball league. So that's one thing I do, obviously spending time with my family, my fiance, my friends. I play a lot of Call of Duty. I play a lot of Call of Duty. So actually put your gamer tags down below in the comment section. I love to play with you all. That'd actually be really, really fun. Um, but yeah, I'm honestly not that stressed. And I was more stressed at my previous job. And I think it was because I was doing development that I wasn't that excited about. Um, and I would say I'm more skilled in front end anyways. So I think that's made the stress disappear. So I guess my experience with front end development has made work easier for me, even though the work I'm doing now is going into like way more customers' hands, if that makes sense. All right, this is another great question. Great question. Any tips for high school students looking to enter computer science? So my recommendation to you is to learn basic programming. You want to learn the basics of programming so you can be somewhat skilled once you take your first programming class. But by all means, you don't need any programming experience to be successful in computer science. However, once you go to college, I would get a feel for the entry level programming courses and see like, is there an entry to the entry level course and an introduction to the entry level course? Because that my university, Intro to Computer Science 1, was really hard, so they had like an introduction to that course. And I didn't take it, but I would have benefited from it if I did. And if your school offers AP Computer Science, try it out. See if you like it. Um, those are my recommendations. I hope that was helpful. Next question. Good places outside of California with demands for software engineers? Uh, I'm gonna try to think of some cities off the cuff, I would say Austin, Texas, um, Chicago. I think Dallas is a good area too. I know Denver, Colorado is a good area. New York for sure. Any of the coastal cities like New York, Seattle. Um, I'm not too familiar with any other like Pacific Northwest places. Um, really all the major cities because a lot of the major industries are in major cities. Oh, Columbus in Ohio is actually a great place to go. Cleveland's solid. Um, but nowhere near like those cities I just mentioned. Um, even though, you know what, Cleveland, I think might have more software engineering job opportunities and tech jobs in Columbus, so I might have lied. Columbus is just a lot bigger city. I know I said I was gonna answer as many questions as possible, so I'm gonna try to answer about two or three more questions. And remember, I'm gonna do my best to answer all these questions in other videos. I might just have like a Q&A section in a video that's like one to two minutes where I can answer a couple questions, a couple questions each video. All right, the next question. Let's see. What are some essential devices for a software engineer? That's an interesting question because you're asking, seems like they're asking like what, well, I guess what devices software engineers um, require or would need, I guess, in a day-to-day -day job. I would say make sure that you have a laptop that has, I would say have a monitor. You wanna have at least two displays because one display will be for, you know, the code. The other display will be for maybe the, um, you know, if, if you're doing web development, then the other monitor or the other display will be for like Chrome or whatever browser you're using to look at the site that you're building. And, or one can be for you know Stack Overflow. Um, I would say at least have two displays. And then I would say make sure you have a really good keyboard because you're gonna be spending a lot of time typing and you wanna make sure that you're as comfortable as possible and ergonomically sound. And the next thing is make sure you have a good mouse. So I would say those four things are the essentials you need as a software engineer. Other than that, I, I, I don't really know. Okay. Last question, can you talk about the entrepreneurial side of CS? This is a great, great question because I think so many times we focus on what programming languages to learn and 
you know, tools and resources, which is great because you need those things in order to program. But why are you building what you're building? What, what's the purpose, right? What's, what's the end goal? Um, and I think this is a great question because the entrepreneurial side of computer science is really important. And this question, can you talk about the entrepreneurial side of computer science? So I would say utilize your programming skill sets to build your portfolio, your brand. You have the ability to take something from nothing and you can create whatever you want. Take advantage of having that skill set. Go to a coffee shop, go to a small business, ask them, do they need a mobile app? Do they need to revamp their website? Do they have a website? Do they, do they have a web presence? Because nowadays, the doors of your business aren't the physical ones. They're what's your website, your, your website homepage. And a lot of businesses need better design. They need better software development. Um, also, um, I guess this kind of goes into the passions project question, but also think about some application that you can build that can make the world better, that could solve a problem. And use your programming skill sets to solve those problems. And when you're solving a problem for yourself, you're also solving a problem for others. So that's really, you know, what I think about the entrepreneurial side of computer science and software development. I think of like starting your own business and doing freelance work. Also, doing those things will make you a better programmer and it'll make you more confident and taking on senior level roles or other roles outside of the roles that you've done in the past because you feel confident, you say, hey, I did all this stuff on my own as a passion project, I could definitely work within a system at a company where I have more resources available. So that's my, uh, that's my rant on the entrepreneurial side of computer science. That concludes this video. I hope you all had a wonderful day and have a blessed rest of your week comment down below some of your thoughts and give this video a thumbs up if you're still here or if you liked it at all subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bell so you can know right away when i drop a video share it with someone who you think might benefit from it and remember don't forget to get sleep shout out to mattress firm for sponsoring this video and i'll see you all next week no promises but i'll see you all soon peace